Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. Now after the fun and frivolity of last week's video, I'm afraid in this video we have some very sad news. Poor John Campbell may not be able to make as much money from grifting videos about excess deaths as he has in the past. Poor John. But before we go on and explain what has happened to cause this tremendous loss for John, let's pay tribute to his great efforts over the last couple of years. Well, these excess deaths, excess deaths, excess deaths, the excess deaths, excess deaths in the United Kingdom, excess deaths, excess deaths in Europe, excess deaths. So we see there's quite a lot of excess deaths. We want to look at excess deaths today. Yes, John does like to make his excess death videos. But as I alluded to, it's now going to be much harder for him to do so because the Office for National Statistics has updated their methodology for calculating excess deaths to bring them in line with best practices. And John no longer has as many excess deaths to bang on about. Let's have a listen to him explaining this sad state of affairs. A warm welcome to today's talk, Friday the 23rd of February. Now, the Office for National Statistics in my country has changed the way the excess deaths are recorded. So we know there's been problems with excess deaths for some time in, in, the, in the United Kingdom, 2020, 2021, 2022, and into 2023. Large numbers of excess deaths. So they've re, now they're now recalculating the way that's done. And it looks in 2023 like the number of people dying are much less. Obviously, the number of people dying in the country is the same, but it now looks less. And I, I suspect the politicians or the government are going to be really pleased with this. Now, you will be pleased to see that there is complete transparency in how this is uh, worked out. So this is from the Office for National Statistics site telling us how this is all worked out. So as you'll see, it's all fairly uh, obvious and, and self-explanatory. So um, I hope you're, uh, hope, hope you're reassured by the transparency there. What? They've just printed a bunch of equations and haven't explained what the changes are. That's terrible. I mean, we're talking about John's livelihood here. How could they do this to him? Let's have a look at this page of equations and see if we can make sense of it. Oh, that's strange. It appears that John is mistaken. They haven't just provided a bunch of equations at all. They've provided a comprehensive nine-page document with considerable details about the changes. I guess John is just so upset about his reduced opportunities to grift that he has missed all the accompanying text. And I'm just showing a small amount of the accompanying text on this slide. There is much, much more. And poor John was so distressed that he even missed the accompanying blog posts that clearly explained the changes that had been made and why they were made. And not only that, he even missed the short video put out by the ONS explaining the changes. He really is very upset. Anyway, since John was too distressed to understand the changes, I'll explain them now. So the first thing to understand is the excess deaths that were previously reported by the ONS weren't really excess deaths. They were just based on a simple comparison to the average death over the previous five years, excluding 2020. And the reason 2020 was excluded was because there was a huge increase in the number of deaths in 2020 owing to COVID. And if these figures were included, it would look like there were more negative excess deaths since 2020. Luckily for John, they didn't do this. Well, these excess deaths, excess deaths, excess deaths, the excess deaths, excess deaths in the United Kingdom, excess deaths, excess deaths in Europe, excess deaths. So we see there's quite a lot of excess deaths. We want to look at excess deaths today. Now, you may be wondering, What's wrong with just comparing with the previous five years? 
Well, basically, it misses out three important things that impact expected deaths. Firstly, the population, which is the dark blue line, is growing. And all other things being equal, you'd expect more people to die if the population is larger. Secondly, the population is ageing. And in particular, the number of people in the population over the age of 70, which is the light blue line, has increased substantially since 2006. Again, you'd expect more people to die if your population contains more people over the age of 70. Thirdly, mortality rates have generally been decreasing over time. The age standardised mortality rates, which is the yucky green line, generally decreased from 2006 to 2011 before levelling off in 2012 to 2018 and dropping again in 2019. It, of course, increased massively in 2020 but has since been trending down again. The new method accounts for these important effects on death rates. The main change is that instead of removing all of 2020 when calculating expected deaths, a more granular approach was used and only months that were substantially affected by COVID deaths have been removed. So that's a simple explanation of what the ONS has done. But if you want more details, I'll provide links in the video's description. Hopefully, once John has recovered from the shock of losing a lucrative income stream, he will be able to understand too. Sadly, it's not the only thing that John couldn't understand in his distressed state. Now, interesting as well, let's look at OECD statistics. Now, OECD statistics... Um, in 2022, there was 52,000 deaths in the UK. So that's 52,000. A lot more than the, OE, the uh, Office of National Statistics figure. And the OECD uh, for 2023, weeks 1 to 44, it's already 49,000. So way more. So it's at least 50,000 um, for the first 40, uh, 44 weeks. So... The um, OECD is showing many more excess deaths uh, than the Office for National Statistics. And the Office for National Statistics is now showing even uh, less deaths than it would have done in 2023. Um, if you can control the information, of course, you control the narrative. I find this concerning. You might find it completely innocent. Yes. It is very concerning for John. I mean, he's going to have to find other things to grift about. He is right to be concerned. Anyway, let's see if we can help him out and explain the differences between the OECD and the ONS figures. Let's see what the link he provided says. This platform has reached the end of its life and will be switched off end of March 2024. The data are not updated anymore. Please use instead our new data dissemination platform, OECD Data Explorer. Well, that's not very helpful. Let's keep digging and see what we can find out about the methodology. Here we go. They're comparing deaths to the average from 2015 to 2019. So not only are they not accounting for changes in population and age structure, they are also looking at years a lot further back than the ONS, who were looking at the last five years, excluding 2020. They do make these limitations very clear, however. As they say, this baseline could be considered a lower estimate of the expected number of deaths since both population growth and an ageing population would be expected to push up the number of deaths observed each year. For example, New Zealand saw its population grow by around 9% since 2015 and the number of people aged over 65 and uh, so age 65 and over increasing by 18%. 
But the OECD has prepared a report that does take these things into consideration. It is the OECD Health Working Paper entitled Examining Recent Mortality Trends, the Impact of Demographic Change. And unsurprisingly, the trend for age standardised mortality rates in the UK, which is the turquoise squares, is consistent with what the ONS showed. There was a substantial increase in the rate in 2020, and it is now trending down again. John has never covered this report. I guess he just can't cope with it. Looking at uh, deaths from various diseases, now this goes up to the end of 2023. So you see that there there's a slight reduction, less deaths than you would expect. That's because of the delay due to Christmas. So this is ischemic heart disease. So we see that there's more ischemic heart disease that's above the line so anything above the line is excess anything below the line is decreased less than we would expect and we see that that is high for uh cardio uh, that's excess mortality that's ischemic heart disease so ischemic heart disease is the reduction in the blood supply through the coronary arteries to the myocardium causing angina and myocardial uh, infarctions would be the main pathologies there uh, this one here is for uh, cerebrovascular disease. So that's diseases of the brain like strokes. And we see again that they're mostly higher as well throughout 2022 and into 2023. And uh, of course, we know that these deaths are not, the majority of these deaths are not at all COVID related. John is so upset about the ONS changes curtailing his grifting. He's forgotten to mention that this isn't the ONS data. Whereas the ONS data uses the previous five years, excluding months with high COVID deaths as a baseline, this data set is using 2015 to 2019 as the baseline. And the reason for this is that the purpose of this database was to look at excess mortality above what would have been expected if the pandemic hadn't occurred. Sadly for John, this will no longer be updated. So there are no further grifting opportunities here either. Of these excess deaths. Excess deaths. Excess deaths. The excess deaths. Excess deaths in the United Kingdom. Excess deaths. Excess deaths in Europe. Excess deaths. So we see there's quite a lot of excess deaths. We want to look at excess deaths today. The reason this database was originally created is because it's well known that pandemics are associated with excess deaths beyond those deaths attributed directly to the disease. So this was a way to monitor those deaths. This paper was published in 1932, which was before vaccines were available for influenza. And it looked at a number of epidemics over a period of 15 years. And what the author found was that in every case, the excess mortality from all causes was appreciably higher than the excess mortality credited to influenza and pneumonia. And in the case of COVID, it doesn't just increase your risk of dying in the short term. Your mortality risk is also increased over the long term. For example, in this study here, between 21 days to 18 months after SARS-CoV-2 infection, there was a five times greater incidence of all-cause mortality compared with contemporary controls and 4.5 times greater compared with historical controls. Now, John is obviously so distressed, he has temporarily forgotten that COVID can cause ongoing cardiovascular and cerebrovascular issues. In the post-acute phase of COVID-19, there was an increased risk of an array of uh, instant neurological sequelae. So there's quite a few things. Now, some of the things we can mention, uh, ischemic and hemorrhagic stroke. Now, a, a stroke is where there's a, a lack of blood supply to part of the brain. Ischemia means it's a lack of blood supply that's damaged part of the brain. Hemorrhagic stroke means there's a, a, a blood vessel has ruptured within the brain. So that's bleeding within the brain. Both cause strokes. Typically, the ischemic ones are much more common. This is called transient ischemic attack, where there's a lack of blood supply to the brain for a period of time. 
Let's hope he gets over the emotional turmoil and remembers what he used to tell his listeners. Early heart disease rise to 14-year high, as we've looked at already. Over 100,000 excess deaths involved in the cardiovascular conditions in England. That's just in England. Over 100,000 excess deaths just from cardiovascular disease. Normally, and there's 140,000 people, deaths every year, one, uh, one every four minutes. Horrendous number of deaths from this. 2022, over 39,000 people in England died prematurely of cardiovascular conditions, heart attacks, coronary heart disease, strokes, an average of 750 people a week, the highest total since 2008. I'm so glad that John decided to mention this important report. The extra 100,000 excess cardiovascular deaths since the start of the pandemic are a good reminder of the effects that COVID has on the heart. As the report points out, the reasons for high numbers of excess deaths related to cardiovascular disease in England are complicated. However, along with deaths caused by COVID-19 among people with cardiovascular disease, we think the longer term impact of COVID-19 infection on the heart and circulatory system and extreme and continued disruption to GP and heart care services have played a role. Now, John didn't actually cover this information in his video, but that's understandable because he is quite distraught, so he's probably not thinking straight at the moment. And he has mentioned the effects of COVID on the heart before, so maybe he just assumed that everyone would remember. Well, welcome to this video and I want to talk about the possible longer term complications of COVID-19, the so-called sequelae, the sort of sequelae, the things that can come after the disease. Now if this video is not for you, um, I'll just give you a brief bottom line. There's increasing evidence that patients that have recovered from COVID-19, perhaps mostly severe cases of COVID-19, but increasingly some evidence that even people that have had milder COVID-19 can be left with some residual cardiac problems afterwards, some heart problems. Although maybe not, because he knows he had a lot less viewers before he started making videos appealing to anti-vaxxers. So a lot of his current viewers may not know about the role of COVID in these conditions. Anyway, He's rightfully upset about the ONS changes that are limiting his grifting opportunities. So it's understandable. So um, who was it said there's lies, darn lies and statistics? I don't know. But um, th 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 this needs a better explanation, in my view, than uh, posting that on the website. Um, yeah. See, this is obviously done by really clever people, isn't it? You know, the, the role of us morons is just to accept whatever whatever they say. Um, I think the communication from the uh, Office of National Statistics could be clearer. Make what you will of that. Uh, I find it concerning, and look forward to further clarification. But for now, thank you for watching. Well, hopefully John will go back to the link he has provided and just read the accompanying text so that he can get the clarification he needs. I do think he is being a bit hard on himself saying he is a moron, though. He was very smart to pivot to making content that appeals to anti-vaxxers once his previous audience lost interest in COVID. Not very ethical but definitely smart. The ONS changes are a bit of a setback to his grifting, but I'm sure that once he gets over the shock, he will find more things to grift about. But let's remember his great contribution to excess death grifting one more time. Of these excess deaths, excess deaths, excess deaths, the excess deaths, excess deaths in the United Kingdom, excess deaths, excess deaths in Europe, excess deaths. So we see there's quite a lot of excess deaths. We want to look at excess deaths today.
And by the way, that clip was kindly provided to me by Culture Cats, who has a great channel looking at weird and fascinating stories across all topics. And he also has a much more pleasant voice than I do as well. You know, my voice is so bad that some people can't even cope with watching my videos. Anyway, I'll provide a link to his channel in the video description, as well as links to all the other data that I've covered. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or a little Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.